Hi everyone, it's Jared. Welcome back to another bass lesson. In this lesson we'll be looking at Fly Me to the Moon, which is a very popular jazz tune. And it's really easy to play because the chords are just moving around in the circle of fifths. First chord being A minor, moving up to D minor, G7, C major, F major, B minor 7, flat 5, and E7. And the chords basically just loop around like that for the whole song, which makes it really easy to walk over. So what my plan was for this lesson was I was going to play a walking bass line and then in post-production I would write out the bass line that I just played and then we talk about the concepts that I am using to make my bass line. So that's the plan, so let's go and I will see you after the bass line. One, two, one, two, three, four. And about 20 to 25 minutes of transcribing later, we have the full bass line on the right-hand side of your screen. As mentioned in the introduction, chord progressions that follow the circle of fifths are very easy to walk over. I won't be doing an extremely in-depth analysis of this bass line, but I will be bringing to your attention ideas and concepts that I think are valuable. A good walking bass line is made up of scales and arpeggios, or put another way, steps and leaps. Chord progressions such as this one that move in fourths fit perfectly with scalar bass line construction. For example, I open the bass line by descending down the C major scale from A on beat 1 to D on beat 1 in the next bar. I do this again in bar 5, starting on F and finishing on B in the next bar. I do this all throughout the bass line, because the chord progression makes it so easy to do. When it comes to leaps, there are a few main ones that I make use of. I play a lot of octaves, for example in bar 13, bar 16, and bar 30. This is typically the largest leap that I'll play. Other than that, I'm mostly playing leaps of a third or a fourth, and these leaps typically follow the chord progression in the form of arpeggios, such as in bar 3, bar 12, bar 54, 
and bar 63, among others. A walking bass motif that I make use of quite frequently in this bass line is a 1-2-3-5 pattern. This can be seen in bar 2 and bar 4. In bar 2, I'm playing the 1, 2, flat 3 and 5 notes of D minor 7 to lead into G7. In bar 4, it's the same idea, now with a major third for C major 7. 1, 2, major 3rd, and 5. Now for another walking bass motif. In bars 17 to 20, I play a very typical bass line for this kind of chord progression. It's an ascending chromatic bass figure which can be played over both major and minor chords. For both major and minor chords, we play the notes 1, 2, minor 3rd, major 3rd. For the G7 chord, I played something a little bit different. I played 1, sharp 1, 2, major 3rd, which actually comes out of the C major bop scale. Next, I want to discuss the use of range. I conduct most of my walking lines in the lower register of the bass. However, it is nice to venture briefly into the upper register for a bit of contrast. A few pointers on using the upper register of the bass. First, ascend gradually. When you suddenly shift from low notes to high notes, it can sound a bit disjointed and unnatural. Try walking up the neck until you get to the top, like in bars 37 to 42. It's like climbing a mountain. It takes some time to get to the top. It's the same concept on the way back down. Descend gradually, as seen in bars 42 to 45. I've discussed this concept in many videos, but the way to make your bass line sound smooth is to pay close attention to the way in which you connect beat 4 of the chord you're on to beat 1 of the next chord. There are three common ways to transition. 1. From a tone above or below the target note. 2. From a semitone above or below the target note and 3. Root to root, from a perfect 4th below or a perfect 5th above the target note. Root to root connections work particularly well with chord progressions that move in the circle of 5ths. Enclosures are where you approach the target note by playing the notes immediately above and below it first. For example, in bar 28, I first play the note G, the minor 7, then B flat, the flat 9, before finally resolving to the root note, A. I'm playing the notes surrounding the note A before playing the note itself. This can be seen again in bars 15 to 16, where I play the notes C and A to set up for the root note B. And again in bar 46, playing first the flat 9 A flat, then the minor 7 F, before resolving to the root note G.
These are examples of diatonic enclosures, or enclosures that follow the associated scale of the current chord. There are also chromatic enclosures, which disregard diatonic harmony, and enclose the target note by a semitone above and below it. If a walking bass line is a cake, then rhythmic variation is the icing. And although many cakes these days are almost 50% icing, you don't want too much icing on your bass lines. Seriously, someone needs to tell cake makers they're putting too much damn icing on their cakes. It's so gross, ugh. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, use your rhythms sparingly. If you overdo it, you may lose the groove. As far as percussive notes, it's really hard to explain how I'm playing them over video, but I'll do my best. There are two main percussive variations that I use. The first is with my left hand, the second is with my right hand. I'm not making any with my feet. A great left-handed example can be seen in bar 57. I play two percussive notes in a row. Once again, it's hard to explain it, but what I'm doing is I'm essentially plucking the string with my left hand to create a percussive sound. In bar 6, the percussive note on the AND of beat 4 is played with my right hand. Thanks for checking out this lesson, I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, as always, please feel free to leave me a comment. And remember to make a donation if you haven't already. Remember, the more you pay, the more you learn, and no donation is too large. Thanks very much, and until the next bass lesson, take care.